Hi, so we'll take a look here at setting up the Moog Minitar in Logic Pro and also how we can have it in Logic Pro as effectively an audio instrument so we'll record MIDI movements and stuff on the controls on the Minitar. A couple of things that you need to make sure you have set up before using the Minitar inside of DAW. I've I've got the, uh, in the back of the Minitar, the output is a jack that is going to my Soundcraft EFX8 mixer. Uh, it could be going directly into one of the inputs on the Apogee GUA, but because I have a few hardware instruments and um, some other synthesizers, I've got a mixing desk so I can sum everything in there and then the output of the mixing desk is going to the input on the Apogee GUA. So we've got the, the balance jack on the back of the Minitar, uh, the output, so we can receive audio from the Minitar. We've also got the power cable over on this side plugged in, and uh, so it powers up, of course, and also the USB cable. And so once we've got the USB cable set up, Logic will recognize the Minitar and receive MIDI information from the Minitar. And so I've loaded up a new project here on Logic Pro and the way I set the Minitar in, in Logic Pro is uh, I've got a couple of options here, software instrument, audio, drummer track, etc. Click on external MIDI and then I click on this use external instrument plugin, check that box and, and the output uh, leaves are the various different things that I have connected to the USB so I can receive MIDI from effectively. The key station, Mini 32, MIDI controller keyboard, the Apogee GUA sound card and of course my Moog Minitar. So I have that selected there and I'm also going to change these input settings here. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this but I'm recording my, my microphone on uh, the second input on the Apogee GUA as you can hear. So I want the Moog Minitar and the mic to have separate channels so otherwise my mic's going to come down the same mixer channel on Logic as the Minitar and I want it to have its own separate channel so I'm going to select input one only for the Moog Minitar. Now I hit create and it's created this external instrument track and let's bring this over here. Uh, MIDI destination, the Moog Minitar, MIDI channel 1, input 1 and we can hear the Minitar which is great and if you set it up in this way what's really nice is that Logic will receive MIDI data from the Minitar so if I can hit record now and record some notes have a look here and we can see we've recorded that badly played sequence that we could then go and start editing around if we wanted to or we can go ahead and record something again but use some of the controls on the Minitar and uh, it will record the MIDI data so go down a couple of octaves from other bass sound And now let's have a look at this. You can already see the MIDI data, but I have a look here. And uh, yeah, it's generated that MIDI data. So let me play this back. So that's really nice. So we could actually go ahead and start editing the filter movements that we recorded in there, you know, tweaking them if we wanted, delete them or re-record them. And um, 
It's great because you've got a hardware analog synth with a beautiful analog sound, but then you could use it a bit like um, an audio instrument and you can tweak your automation parameters and create nice curves or record it all in live, but then tweak it if you wanted to. Um, so that's really nice. So that's setting up the Minitar. Uh, gonna do another video now and just have a look at a bit of a features overview of the hardware and then we're going to start looking at maybe the plug out software and just get a bit under the hood and create some really cool sounds with this amazing synth. Alright, thanks.